So, the last video did relatively pretty well, all things considered, and because of that, I'd really like to thank everybody that watched and supported the last Skyrim Legendary video. I never really expected the video to do that well, and the channel has been growing exceptionally well over the last week, so hopefully we can continue to grow because I've genuinely been enjoying making these. So, what are we going to do today? Well, I've already dealt with bandits and Draugr, as well as a giant, depending on who you might ask. So our next goal is defeating a dragon. Well, defeating a dragon with an army of white ring guards, because there is no way I'm killing a dragon on my own. I will, however, take all the credit, because I am the dragonborn, and I'd like to believe that I'm the main character of the story, despite being one-shot by a gust of wind. So after clearly listening in on everything that they are saying, and not getting distracted by anything at all, the Jarl asked for our help again, which he was mistaken for because I am the Skyrim version of a blobfish. Then he gave us permission to buy property in Whiterun, which was his second mistake because my net worth is about as much as a newborn baby. He also gave us an Iron Helmet of Restoration, which is sure to come in handy soon, especially since we're going to be using healing spells often. First things first, however, I wanted to boost my skills up a little bit, which will lead us to a small bandit encampment up here northwest of Whiterun. I made my way outside and enjoyed the gorgeous sights of Whiterun and the peaceful fields outside. Making the most out of my few minutes outside of combat, the nature was beautiful. The smaller animals enjoying themselves in their freedom. Oh, how it must feel to be that clueless. It's almost as if the dragon crisis was nowhere near us. Continuing on our way, we steered clear from the nearby giant camp as I don't think we were ready enough to defeat one on our own. A mammoth decided to give us the death stare before knowing what's good for it and minding its own business. A few seconds down the path, we found a skeletal arm emerging from the shallow waters, offering us an orcish sword, which we gladly took to sell later, as it wasn't any better than our current mace. In front of us stood the silent moon camp, home of the Lunar Forge, which houses the lunar weapons. However, we would not get there without a fight. Bandits guard the forge for their own malicious gains, so we approach them, seeking a fight. Until our nemesis arrives, wielding the power of lightning, she dealt an absurd amount of damage that led us to hide behind a rock in fear of our lives. We then took that opportunity to heal ourselves. Near full health, I tried to find an opening, and when I found one, I went in for the kill. And then again. After several attempts of brute forcing our way through her, we finally got her down, so I chucked some health potions and successfully won our duel. However, she was not the last. Thankfully, a wolf was around to help me. After our agreement ended, he went for my throat, but I was victorious. Climbing up the stairs, only two bandits remained. Making short work of one, the second bandit forced us to retreat and heal ourselves. Back at full HP, we were given the chance to dispatch of him once and for all. At the now liberated Silent Moon Camp, we found two lunar weapons, an iron mace and a steel war axe. The mace was exceptionally good as it had a 20 point enchantment. I then leveled my health up and put a perk in blocking. Now, with our new enchanted weapons, we went back to Dragon's Reach to level some skills up. We started by buying new spells that we were sure to make use of later down the line, but not now as we didn't have enough mana. I then enchanted a bunch of iron daggers that I upgraded back at the forge with the Silent Moon enchantment and it proved fairly effective in leveling our enchanting skill up. After a few more weapons, we got to level 27 enchanting, and almost to a new level, which should prove useful when we fight our dragon. Afterwards, I headed out of the Temple of Kinnereth to get the blessing that will give us 25 points of stamina. So we farmed for a little bit of skill experience, and now it was time to prepare for our dragon fight. First and foremost, I decided a good idea would be visiting the forge to gain a little bit of smithing experience and sell our newly enchanted supply of iron daggers. I bought some iron ingots to upgrade some weapons, and then I forgot that I don't have the arcane smith perk. You there. We're looking for someone in Whiterun. 
I kicked the smith out of her own forge and used it to create my own shabby iron daggers, which were sure to fetch a whopping price of 10 gold. But we needed every last penny we could spare because our next stop was making potions, so I picked up as many ingredients as I could find. Full of frustration, I didn't take lightly to anyone talking to me. Do you get to the cloud district very often? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you don't. But regardless of that, I ignored the voices in my head and went inside the alchemy shop to craft some health potions. I bought some wheat and only had enough money to buy one blister wort, but we were still able to make a health potion that restored 22 points of health. Unfortunately, this was not our only problem. We were now poor. All this early game skill grinding took a toll on our wallet, so I had an idea. I went out of Whiterun and visited the farms to make some easy gold, borrowing all the cabbages we could find, and I also went for some potatoes as well, desperately foraging around for any bit of vegetable we could hand in for a profit. I also attempted to teach the captive cow the art of escaping its prison. I then gave the farmer all the produce I found strewn across the floor and got paid a measly 90 gold. However, I then remembered another opportunity I had to save my money. And that led us to the other wheat farm across the stream. When I poked my head above the hill, I saw it. Wheat. Our key to making many more health potions and boosting our alchemy skill. I picked up all the wheat I could find and then taught another cow that they could just walk over the low wall. Back in Whiterun, I prepared for the final stretch. I sold all the items that I didn't need and then bought more ingredients for health potions. I spent a while crafting different potions with all the ingredients that we picked up. Although they weren't very good, they would still help us mitigate some damage the dragon would deal to us. It would help us ever so slightly against the dragon's breath. And so began our final stretch. With the watchtower in sight, I took a deep breath and slowly made my way towards it. I also equipped the iron mace because it dealt 20 burn damage as well as the base 15. So I wait until nightfall for its effect to work and met up with our friend. We made our way towards the tower and I tried to think of a battle plan inside. I decided to go to the roof and there it was our biggest fight yet. I threw everything I could at it. All my arrows went to whittling down its infinite health pool. I sheltered inside the limited safety of the tower while my allies went at it with brute force and raw strength, an option that I did not have. Finally, it landed in front of me as I decided to lash at it with my mace, but I instantly perished and did not last a single second. But that still didn't stop me. I kept smacking it with my mace, dealing damage in small chunks at a time. It was almost at half health, so it was about time I threw everything I had at it. I went face to face with it and got a couple of hits in, and then leveled up my magicka for the future. I considered improving my enchanting, but I decided that more melee damage would be optimal for now, so I drew my secret weapon. The fishing rod. I activated my daily power and chucked some potions that I made, and there it was, near death. I poured the last of my strength into every swing before the main character jumped on the dragon and brought down the final blow. Now that the dragon was gone, we had a bit of an opening to relax and gather our resources to get even stronger. I enjoyed my walk back to Whiterun, and found that the sign outside was more interesting than whatever the Jarl had to say. So what happened at the watch when we were in the Jarl's presence, the we told him about the fight and warmed up by the fire while they went on about the dragonborn and the greybeards. 
I didn't care, because it's cold outside and I'd rather stay warm. The Jarl gave us the axe of Whiterun and announced us as Thane. We then restocked on potions and said hello to our new shield, uh, I mean, friend, Lydia. I then gave her all the items that I didn't need right now and made my way outside to go into town to sell some things. And then I also went to the inn to talk to Sadia to continue the Red Guard quest. Restocked on potions with a fair bit of money on hand, me and Lydia went on the path to High Hrothgar to meet with the Greybeards. The journey would be a long one, and the path would surely not be easy. But after that dragon, we were ready for anything. <laughs>